Hey guys, I'm Karma Jolt, and I'm here with Athena Fox and Miss Mumble Zero Mumbles, and you're watching Let's Play Solstice, exclusively on the Sakimoto Fanboy channel. Balls. Dear Doiry. What an eventful time I've had since I last wrote. I'm going to tell you all about it. First, I should probably say something about how I can write this diary. Well, that's the odd thing. I don't. Well, I do, but not in the conventional way. See, I found a few empty rows of parchment on the ground in one of the rooms. And it turns out that if I say something out loud, that ends up on the parchment. If I make a mistake, I can just say that I want to correct it, and that's it. Quite frankly, I'm really astounded. I mean, where in the world does such a thing exist? I think I've ended up in another world. I've heard about parallel universes and stuff like that. And I suppose that this is one of those. It's like a weird dream. Everything works differently than they do in the normal world. Where am I? I don't know. Perhaps I will find out when I find all the stuff pieces. Then I can rescue the woman I'm having visions of and get rid of that creepy dude with the unsettling grin. Maybe I will get some answers then. Anyway, I've done a lot of things since I wrote the previous entry. I decided to retrace my steps and check out another part of the garden which I'd forgotten about before. And I found another stuffed piece. If I'm correct, I only have one more to go now. This piece was guarded by a really devilish puzzle and I needed to use a sip of the blue potion. In fact, I've had to use potions extensively now since I either need to freeze time or jump on top of enemies to proceed. I find it a bit strange that touching enemies harms me, but there you go. Perhaps that's just the way things are in this world. The trolls have no problems walking on spikes, but I dread to find out what would happen if I even touched them. Speaking of retracing my steps, I returned to a place down in those mines where I turned it around last time. This time, I finally got what those weird bubbles do in order to make them work in my favour, and that meant that I could get across the floor of death. I encountered two new types of enemies too, and they freaked me out so badly that I nearly passed out. First, I ran into heads on feet. Yeah, that's the best way to describe it. Or rather, a head on a foot. Two of them. And they just jumped around aimlessly, bumping into each other at random. Ugh! The other new type was a spider. Three of them, to be exact. Huge things, taller than me, walking on three legs. Strangely coloured, too. They look like something that belongs to the Mardi Gras. I think I might have seen these spider tripods before, but I don't remember. Things really start to blur in my head now. Once I got past those new horrors and a few more rooms that actively try to end my life, I found another key. I still don't know what these do, but I think I have four of them now. I'm not sure since everything I pick up disappears until I need them, and I can't for the life of me get the keys to reappear. Maybe they act more like switches than keys. Oh, who knows.
I also found another one of those teleportation devices. This pair didn't cause me to end up somewhere completely different though. I actually travelled between them without any fuss. Getting to the first one was a pain though. If I could have used my hands, I could have climbed over the wall that was blocking me from getting past to the other teleporter, eliminating the need of the device in the first place. Of course, I couldn't climb over. It's like someone designed these rooms with my unique disadvantages in mind. Sometimes I think I'm in a game or something. Like someone's controlling what I encounter. I don't know why I feel like this, but I can't seem to shake the feeling that something is very, very wrong here. I also found out that if I freeze blocks in midair and pick them up, when I poop them out again, they don't fall to the ground. It's like the freeze time is carried inside of them. I had to use this trick to get across a room that looked impossible at first. Also, standing on a floating spike ball is not a nice feeling. I've had just about everything off my body at this point. Well, after a while I ended up in a tower. I have a kind of final feeling about this. Like, this is the place where everything happens. Perhaps I will find the last staff piece here, and I can get out of this castle. What happens then? I don't know. Perhaps I will be transported back. Perhaps I'm stuck here. I guess I won't know until I try. This is Shane Daxter. Signing out.